Hey, what's up everybody? Eduardo Talbert here with Monster Tutorials. Today, I wasn't going to do a tutorial. I was walking outside and found this little bug right here. Check this guy out. It's super dangerous. This thing packs a real bite right here. Oh yeah, that's delicious. I'm just kidding. Today we're making this guy right here. And I'll also show you how to make this nasty trail of slime. So join me here in the studio while we make some grubs. Alright, so the way I made this bug, where is he? I was sitting there like trying to type an email and then out of the corner of my eye I see this mold and there's a silicone mold that I got on clearance at Michael's. It was like a dollar or something down from like eight dollars and I said I don't know what I'm going to use this for but I'm gonna buy it. So I got it. So I grabbed the mold and you know I'm easily distracted so I put the email away. I grab some liquid latex and some cornstarch and start messing around and ended up with this guy. So that's what we're doing today. All right, first step. I take this little thing, put some liquid latex in there and start mixing some cornstarch until the liquid latex becomes nice and thick. All right, just put a little bit at a time because it's hard to mix. The way this cures is it's dissolved with ammonia and when the ammonia uh, evaporates or gets absorbed then the liquid latex becomes rubbery. So if you add this, this will be absorbing that ammonia so you have to mix it in very slowly. You still want it to be runny so it goes into all the crevices of your mold. Mix it real well because you'll get some clumps in there. And that's fine if the clump is in the middle of the bug. All right, mix it real well. And we're going to pour these molds. That is perfect. Let this cure. This might be a day, it might be a few days, depending on your uh, how fresh your liquid latex is. Uh, it also depends on the temperature in your house and all that stuff. I would not use a hair dryer on this because it will seal the wet liquid latex inside and it will never cure. So just leave it, set it aside and come back later. Check on it once in a while uh, and make sure that the inside is cured before you try to demold this. It's been two days, check these out. They are mostly cured and they have shrank. The edges uh, of the grubs are coming off the mold. So let's try to unmold a couple of these. This one in the middle still has a very white spot, which means it's probably not cured all the way yet. So I'm gonna leave that one there. Right, that's a beauty right there. See, that one's still kind of raw on the top, so I'm gonna have to use this one for something else, like with wings. And you can feel how dense they are. Like this one still feels pretty mushy, but this one's nice and solid. So I bet you this one is good and ready to come out. Here we go. So some of them have some bubbles, but that's fine. We'll fix that. That too. And this one, you may want to, if you need to push it in, push it in. But I may put some wings on this one. We'll focus on these two today. Next step. Grab yourself more liquid latex. Little cup. And my favorite, food coloring. I'm also going to get some brown paint or whatever color you want your worms to be. Maybe we should do this one in the traditional like maggot colored which is kind of like cream and brown and black and this one we can make it into a fancy caterpillar and paint it maybe green and some bright colors. Taking some acrylic paint 
and I'm going to put a little drop of yellow to brighten it just a little bit. And I'm going to paint the bug all the way with the yellow. Let that base coat dry. I'm using a little bit of brown here to darken what the head is going to be. For this one I'm going to paint the head brown. Just like that. And I'm going to run this brush with the brown paint on every single one of these ridges just to darken it a little bit. And then I'm going to rub the excess off. Alright, so I painted lines on all the sections and just rubbed them off a little bit. It made it a little bit dirtier, but that's fine. And then I'm going to take these last three sections and give them a little extra coat of brown. Just darkening it just a little bit. And this is just from seeing pictures on the internet of different types of like grubs, bugs, caterpillars. Right, this guy is dry. I'm going to make some spots on it. And for that, I'm going to use some just white paint. And I'm just putting some circles in different areas. Right, that's looking cool. Let's put some little ones. In every other section. Uh, this is not based on a real caterpillar but just my imagination uh, building up from all the caterpillars that I've seen. All the creepy ones, all the cool ones and the colorful ones and the hairy ones. All right that looks awesome. Set that aside to dry. While this guy dries Let's glaze this one. So I put a little bit of liquid latex there, two drops of green and two drops of red. We're trying to make a nasty brown color. That will make the grub look all shiny. Mix it real well. See that color? It's like brown. That'll dry kind of clear but with a brown tint. Alright, so I'm just going to like pour this over the grub and then just make sure that we get it all over. Again, this will dry clear and shiny. And this is a very thin layer, so no worries helping it out with a hair dryer. So just put it on low heat and dry it. And just like that, that is nice, dry, and shiny, okay? I'm gonna let it cure a little bit longer while we work on this guy. All right, for that little dude, I have a green food coloring and neon green food coloring. So I'm using the neon and taking some liquid latex and putting just a drop or two of it because it's going to opaque this white right here. Again, a little bit of liquid latex, just a tiny bit, and a couple drops of this neon green. This thing is super bright. Now let's mix it up. Look how bright that is. And we're doing the same thing. Just going to pour it over this and then use a cotton swab to make sure that we get it all over the place. And on this one just dab it so you don't lose that those nice little white dots you made. Cool, let that cure. All right, these guys are nice and cured. So I'm just going to carefully peel them off and then cut the excess liquid latex out of there. All right, these guys are still a little wet underneath so I'm going to flip them over so it dries on the underside. That should take only about a minute. 
All right, I'm going to cut this edges off to clean it up a bit. I'm just cutting that edges to make it look a little rounder. All right, that looks awesome. These guys are nice and cured. I have cut the flashing off, those little pieces that were kind of hanging on the sides. Now this one I'm going to try to make more realistic. It already looks kind of like a, some sort of a pupa or a grub. And this one is going to be more cartoony or spectacular or like an exotic uh, caterpillar, the kind that if it bites you, you die. So to touch it up, I noticed that the white spots kind of turned a little bit green because of the glaze. So I'm going to touch them up with a nail polish, white nail polish, because that is nice and shiny and it looks wet. And I'm just going to touch up some of the spots we already had. That will also give the spots a little bit of relief as they are lifted up a bit. Look like they're sticking out. That looks awesome. Now, with the black nail polish, I'm going to paint both their heads. I want them to be all shiny. You can make eyes if you want. I'm just going to paint their whole heads black. That's awesome. And this one. Look at that. That is awesome. Now while that dries, I'm going to show you how to make this tool that I'm going to use. And this is a hair punching tool. Okay, so I grabbed just a regular sewing needle and that is the eye of the needle and what I did is I cut it with some pliers like that okay and then I ground it with my Dremel tool that way so do I have this sharp point here and it comes around and then this is rounded and that's what the tip of it looks. And I'm going to grab the hairs in this space and push them into the latex grubs. So let me show you how I do that. And before we punch any of the hair in, I'm finishing some of the details because it's very difficult to paint around the hairs. So I'm taking some clear nail polish and I'm painting all the sections to give it that nice wet look. And the last step I'm going to do, I mean, you can decorate these as much or as little as you want. I'm using some red nail polish to put a couple dots along it, just to make it even more exotic. All right, that's looking pretty deadly there. I'm going to let the red dry, cover it with clear nail polish, and we go into the hair punching. All right, check it out. These guys are painted. They have all the uh, clear nail polish on them. They're nice and shiny. So now this part, this next part is the hair punching, which is kind of nerve wracking because I had never done this before. I just watched it on YouTube. Some people that make like really realistic props and they usually work with silicone. And we're working with crappy liquid latex mixed with uh, cornstarch, but we're going to try it anyway. I have uh, these things are those dollar store. Uh, wigs that uh, I used to just leave them hanging around but my cat doesn't like wigs he sees them and he attacks them and wrestles with them and turns them into these nests of mess so he got a hold of two of them so that's what I'm going to use we're going to grab like a, a lock of the hair we're going to cut it off we're going to fold it in half like this and we're going to be hooking these loops and punch them into the worms. I'm going to use the orange on the fancy colorful worm and I'm using the brown one on the brown grub. Alright, let's do this and I'm going to try to make this camera uh, go as close as possible so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm going to start on the front and work my way back and I'm taking a uh, nice little piece of this orange hair so this should be more than enough and get a long piece 
a long piece this is like a five or six inches long so it's easy to to fold and maneuver uh, for this worm instead of doing one hair at a time I'm going to do about four or five at a time in each hole so I'm going to take the needle hook a few hairs like that uh, we are going to punch them into the spot that you want okay now we just pull the needle out and the hair is stuck in there okay and we'll give this guy a haircut later so I'm going to start punching for this one I'm going to do one in the middle one on this side one on that side then the same repeat the three so this is just rinse and repeat I'll show you a few times but I'm just going to be doing the same thing over and over again Right, do it all the way to the back. Do as many or as little as you want. This dude's hairs are all punched and he is ready for a haircut. Now I'm not going to bore you with this one, but I'm going to do the same. But instead of the orange hair, I'm going to be using the dark brown hair. And I'm done with this one. As you can see, I only ran them up and down the spine. So this will be like a mohawk caterpillar so I'm gonna give them a haircut and we can mount them all right that's looking awesome I'm going to do the same to this one and I'm gonna make them about an inch long that's looking wild right there all right let's get the shadow boxes ready these are turning awesome okay for the shadow boxes what I did is I went to Ikea and I got these frames these were like $2.99 I think three dollars each I got three of them because you never know how many specimens you'll need and uh, it's they're pretty deep so you can put out something like 3d in there so let's see if this works out Okay, for the mounting mat, I'm just going to use this foam. It's kind of like a white, but it's kind of like yellowish foam. I'm going to use this as the template for it. There it is. I'm just going to glue it right on top. And what that allows us to do is once we put the specimen, we can take some pins and go into the foam. Line up your foam, put it right on top. For this next step, I'm using the my standard Brookside University label. I made these labels a while ago to make some specimen uh, jars and things. And all it is is a bunch of labels printed on white paper and then soaked in coffee and then set to dry. So let's give this guy a name. Right, just put it right there, center it where you want. You have to decide whether you want it like this or like this, whichever way you want to mount it. I want it just like that, evenly spaced. I'm taking some of these vintage pins and picking uh, maybe four of the black ones. There we go. So pick the spot where you want your grub to be mounted. And just put a couple pins right through it. Four. All right, little glue for our label. And there we have our first grub specimen. That's going to go in my lab, in my Brookside University lab with all the specimen jars. 
Now for the Mohawk killer grub, I wanted to show you a trick first and that's how we started this video. And this is how it works. Okay, so this is how I did that other trick. This is just regular dish soap from Trader Joe's. I don't know if it makes any difference. This is the one that I had. And you put one drop, grab some clear glue, and put one drop. Take your toothpick, stir it until it starts turning color. Just like that. So this will be great for your creepy movie. This is like the cheapest, easiest special effect in the planet. And you put your grub and there you go. There is your slimy grub. And you can tint this any color you want using food coloring. Half a drop of red, this will look like blood. Green will look like slime. It's up to you. So this is just your basic slime formula. And when you're done, clean it up and it's gone. It's just like slime. It doesn't even stick to your hands. And now the whole desk smells like, what's this? Lavender tea tree. Awesome. All right, back to the tutorial. All right, there you have it. There is the Mohawk grub. And the colorful, super poisonous one. If you like these specimens, just give it a thumbs up to this video. And if you like this kind of stuff, or like that fairy or that mask, don't forget to subscribe. I'm doing this all year round, every year. All right, I'm Eduardo Talbert with Monster Tutorials. I will see you next time.